Welcome Skyback Industrial 85. So we're in Wilsmere in Kew and if you haven't been down to this place from a historic perspective, um, do put this on your hit list um, and get down and check out this fantastic heritage listed um, decommissioned hospital. Industrial 85 can be used for high internal dusting and vacuuming uh, with the addition of a brush kit. But today on this complex we are going to run through some high reach gutter cleaning. So high reach um, to a maximum height of 12 metres. And we've just set up here so that we can see from ease of access and there is kilometres and kilometres of gutters on this uh, property in this residence. So uh, this particular system can get a severe workout. It does come with a, a user manual, so do take time to go through the user manual and uh, follow the care procedures um, and also the use of the particular system. So the, the Industrial 85 is a 3300 watt system. So three individual motors, uh, which are 1100 watts each, comes on a sturdy steel uh, frame so it's easy to push around grounds like this. The, the head of the arrangement is easily removable and most of the weight is in the, is in the head. So it's a, it's a wet dry vacuum and as we tilt the head you can actually hear the float valve. So access to the filter which is a, a washable filter is obtained through disconnection there and this gauze washable filter can be hosed out or even with a leaf blower, you can blow it out. So it'll need to be maintained going through your gutter vacuum cleaning day. So will the gauze underneath that, but that'll stay quite clean, protected by the filter. So that will go back into a position like that. And that filter actually stays remarkably clean um, in relation to the way the particular system is built. So we have dirt coming into the front of the vacuum cleaner from a side entry port. We get a circular motion of the dirt inside and it actually hits the deflector screen. So the filter itself stays remarkably clean. The trolley in, in itself um, for emptying has a sieve drain basket. So when we're pulling lots of leaf matter, we can empty that basket and we can empty that into probably some flexi containers. The trolley itself is tippable. So from an ergonomics perspective, um, we can watch that back and uh, carry out that in, in a safe manner. Even full with water, um, it's quite easy to tip. If we're going down tight corridors or, or tight spaces, even with the golf buggy in this particular um, setting and environment, we can easily disconnect the drum and put that into your golf buggy and use the vacuum of that nature like that and that can actually stay within the golf buggy. So it is quite handy in tight spaces. Um, does have a water drain on the front so it can be used to suck pits. So if you have stormwater pits coming off the gutters, what I recommend is a bit of 40 mil pressure pipe in the end of the flexi cuff and you can use that as a podger to go around and, and suck out those pits and, and drains on the ground or even vacuum up leaves on the ground. The hose, 50 mil, quick disconnect um, and it's a lightweight reinforced hose. There's 7.5 metres on this particular system. The front of the vacuum has a sliding switch and that switch actually chokes out the vacuum cleaner. So there's two positions which you'll see and it'll also refer to in the manual, one light and the other heavy. So this particular 3300 watt runs at 10,000 litres a minute at 150 inches of water lift. And water lift is just the category that they use to measure vacuum. So I'd recommend it using the system in the light mode, which will be high airflow. When we need to lift something heavy, so if we're gonna pull a big grass runner in a gutter and we need to grab onto that and it's quite heavy in weight, we can choke motors out and it will physically grab onto that. You can physically lift a heavier weight with the vacuum cleaner itself. But 99% of the time, keep it in the lighter mode. It'll keep the vacuum cooler and um, higher airflow to, just to pull those light leaves.
when we put the vacuum head back on, switches go to the front of the handle so that when the dirt comes in, it hits the deflector screen. If we put the vacuum head back on in the reverse direction, dirt's gonna go straight into the filter. So switches always towards the front of the handle. It's 33 latches. Now the system does need to a power management um, study, so it does run at 15 amp, and today we've just hooked up for the demonstration a 15 to 10 amp adapter. Um, or a 5 kVA generator. So it is 3300 watt and it will pull 15 amp. In the kit today we have a recordable camera. So initially on a site like this the recordable camera will be good. You'll be able to throw back to Strata, um, give proof of um, carrying out the, the task or use it for surveillance. So some of these high gutters are probably 12 meters in height so you can carry out surveillance putting this on your vacuum poles or on your inspection pole to go along and say these gutters are actually clean and we don't have to set up here to do this one particular run. So the recordable camera does have micro SD and we can record that video or take those particular pictures. The toolkit uh, for the elite poles which we'll talk about shortly there's an array of attachments um, both aluminium and plastic um, the main difference is the crevice tool. So the crevice tool is 25 mil. So some of the older gutters, if the tiles or slate has come down, you can't get your fingers in. You can use a, what I call a bad day, being narrow to be able to get some tooling in there to vacuum the gutter. So positioning your end tools is, is very, very important. And as we will demonstrate today, if we're gonna use a crevice tool and the iron is coming down uh, towards the end of the gutter and it's quite tight. We want to position the crevice tool so that we're pulling debris from underneath the tile, slate or, or, or iron. If we position it in the other direction, we're just going to be pulling from the outer side of the gutter. So we need to be aware in what direction the tools are being used and, and how we're actually using that. So when we're pulling along, I'll tend to, if I'm walking parallel to this gutter, I'll tend to position a tool of this nature so it's actually sucking from underneath the overlying iron as we work along. The hairpin gooseneck is, is quite unique to Skyvac. So it's carbon fibre gooseneck and there are a couple other different variations available. Um, but in uh, what we've seen here today, this will do probably 99% of the work. So it's wide throat, um, which will alleviate blockages. If we're going to get blockages, 99% um, of the time it'll be at the end of the, the tool end. And this particular tool end here will probably be 99% of what you'll use to do these gutters of what we're seeing today. So the Elite poles are super lightweight, they're 280 grams a pole, uh, up to 12 metres in reach. The base pole has what we call vacuum release, vacuum dump. So when we're carrying out gutters, cleaning, um, most people will initially say, I need a camera in the kit and cameras are great and we can position the camera up here to be able to see the tip end and be able to see what we're actually doing. Once we become familiar with the vacuum cleaning system from Skyvac, um, you'll find you'll use the camera less and less and you'll use it more for surveillance or you'll use it for proof, proof of uh, task. So I, I call it the six senses when we're carrying out the gutter cleaning and it's, it's very important. I often say if someone's blind or visually impaired, if I can put that tooling in the gutter, they can clean gutters. So we're going to listen to the airflow at the tip. We're going to be able to feel the tip in the gutter. So if I put that in the gutter, I can feel, even not looking at it, that it's, it's soft and, and spongy compared to metal on metal or there is plastic tips. You can feel that, that difference. You can, you'll be able to hear the air at, at the tip you can feel the airflow going through the poles and you can also feel the temperature of the poles. So as the poles become colder, it's an indication that the poles are full of mud and they need to be cleaned. They'll also become heavier. So having a, a flexi tub as, as well um, at the end of the day or even beside you, if it's got um, a few litres of water in it, we can clean out those poles. So we can take a, a gulp of water, which will um, shoot down the poles at a million miles an hour, will remove the mud and uh, lighten up the weight of those particular poles. 
So the other sense is the vacuum cleaner. So like any vacuum cleaner, if we're vacuuming at home and we choke out the vacuum cleaner, you'll get an audible noise in the vacuum that we're, we're blocked. So if you're at home and we suck up a sock, we, we, we know it. So it's exactly the same here. But one of the, the other key factors with the Elite Poles is the vacuum release. And it's the same as um, your standard floor tool kit at home with the thumb knob. So when we twist the vacuum and we're not under load, we will get an indication of, of how the tool end is. So if we turn the system on, and if I close the vacuum port, I know now that the vacuum's under load. And if I've got many meters of hose or pipe carrying a gutter clean, if I open this, I know that I've got an indication here that we have a blockage. So what I say throughout the job, even if we're not gonna drop something to the ground, if we twist this regularly throughout the job and we're not getting that big air discharge, we know that we're not blocked at the tip. So it's a very good indication. So all those sensors together will give us an understanding of how the vacuum is, is working. Um, so that's a, a good overview of the Skyvac um, Industrial 85 at 3,300 watt, 10,000 litres a minute at 150 inches of water lift. Uh, we did, did also discuss high internal dusting and vacuuming. So in some of these um, old buildings, we can add a brush kit. We can do a reasonable amount of dust with the current filter. If we needed to change the filter, we can flick over to a HEPA and we can add those brush kit to do all that specialty dusting at, at height. So it's something you can bring back in house as, as well. So we'll fire it up now. We'll run through some of these gutters and uh, give you an understanding of how we clean. So when we clean a gutter, I often say when the gutters are full, we need to break into the gutter. So we need to make a space and break into that gutter. Once we've broken into a gutter, we've got a, a, a clear way to keep on moving forward. And we can then move forward a few inches and then move back. In doing so, I can twist this and I can also hear what's going on upstairs. We're down nice and low and there's uh, kilometres of gutter here and we're going to have all different scenarios as we, as we uh, go around. Um, so now I've got something there. Being a little bit aggressive too will help alleviate blockages. I tend to pull the tools, so I'll start at one particular point, set the vacuum cleaner up and, and work our way through. Being Having buildings of different heritage ages on this particular site, you'll find gutter brackets will vary. This particular gutter bracket is fully external and is not gonna be a hindrance. Some of the new houses on this property will have uh, a bracket that goes all the way across. So what we'll do is, on those particular instances, you'll work along, you'll physically hit the gutter bracket. And gutter brackets will be seen by, from the ground like this, or if they're new, we'll have rivets and fixtures. So you'll be able to have, have an indication that we've hit a gutter bracket, you'll come along, hit it, then you'll come up and you'll come back down on the other side. Twigs and sticks, you know, on the property there's a, a number of different leaves and uh, um, foliage. So just ignore them. A lot of the twigs and sticks in the gutter will be knocked out as we move along. And I can feel that now that I've got metal on metal, this particular. I can go back over and do a final sweep. I can angle the tooling back underneath the iron. And we've just done a couple of metres of clean there. A 
we had a blockage there. We heard the vacuum. I picked up on it. I twisted the handle and I gave it a bit of a gave it a bit of a wriggle. And we got a blockage there now. And it's gone again. So if we do get blockages in the end of the in the end of the tooling like that, um, you will give it a, a, a bit of a, a workout at height. Um, worst case scenario, you'll twist and you might have to drop it to the ground to alleviate that stick or twig that's going up there. Um, having that bucket of water, you might be able to drop it in that bucket of water and, and clean that out as well. Yeah. Who would like But it just gives you an understanding, especially at the height we are here, to see how to actually carry out the task. So single story, double story will be quite easy um, in relation to um, a physical aspect. Yeah, nine metres you're going to work a bit harder and 12 metres is definitely going to be a physical activity. Yeah. While you're there, I can hear the vacuum. What I'll do... The vacuum sounded higher. Yeah. He's got us... Ah, see, look at that. Wow. So, you know, we did choose wow. a gutter right under a tree and um, and that's, uh, yeah, that's what it's made for. You have a lot of compost.